Hey everyone, and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to be creating our Godot project. We are then going to be looking at how we can actually set up our own custom editor plugin for the engine. So to begin, we're going to go to the project manager here and click on the new project button. We're then going to create a project name. So I'm just going to call this one our texture generator plugin. We can then choose a project path and then click on the create folder button to create a new folder inside that path. And then finally create an edit to open up the editor. Now inside of the editor here, um, whatever scene we create initially doesn't really matter because if you have an existing game that you want to implement this plugin in, you can follow along just fine. Uh, but if you have just a blank project where you want to create the plugin, then we can create a 2D or a 3D scene as it doesn't really matter because we're not going to be interacting with the game scene that much. It's really just going to be the editor plugin. Um, so I'm just going to create a 2D scene here. I'm just going to call this node main. We're going to save that as main.tscm like so. And that's pretty much all we're gonna do for this scene. Now, how do we go about actually creating a plugin? And what is a plugin in Godot? Well, first of all, Godot is made up of a number of different docs. Okay, you see we have scene, import, we have file system, we have inspector, node, history. These are all known as docs. And what creating a plugin allows us to do is essentially create our own custom doc here, where we can then develop the UI and functionality so that we can basically have, uh, in our case, a texture generator using AI slotted inside of our UI on the editor here. So we can do that when we're developing our game, we can create textures, save them to our project files. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we want to go up to project, then project settings, and then inside of the project settings window, we want to go to the top and go over to the plugins tab. Now here inside the plugins tab, we then want to go create new plugin. And there's a bunch of information we can fill out here, but really we just want to fill out the plugin name. And this is just going to be our texture generator plugin. Okay. Uh, we'll just call it texture generator actually. So texture generator, um, it's automatically going to create a new subfolder for us, but you can create your own custom path here if you wish. You can add description, an author, a version, uh, language, you probably want to keep at GD script. Script name, we can leave this empty as well and click create. Okay, so what this is going to do is down in the file system, it's going to create a new folder called add-ons. Inside of that, it's going to create a texture generator folder for our plugin. And inside of that, it's going to create a texture generator.gd script. Now this script here is not going to control uh, the functionality of our plugin, okay? It's not gonna be communicating with the AI servers, getting the images, saving them to our uh, file system. Rather, this script is mainly set up to load the uh, UI and unload it when we want to close the plugin, okay? So this is sort of the um, launcher, you could say. So we're not gonna do anything in here just yet. Rather, what we're going to do is we are going to create ourselves a brand new scene, which is going to represent our dock. So let's hop over into 2D mode here. I'm going to right click on the texture generator folder that was created for us. I'm going to go create new scene. Uh, we're going to create a user interface scene. So that's going to create a control node for the root. And the scene name, we can call this one our texture generator uh, dock. Click OK and that is gonna create our new scene here. It's gonna add it to the folder. Uh, if it's not in the folder, then you can simply just drag it in. Now with this doc here, this, if we select it, um, and you should see this orange box. If you don't, you can click Q or go up to the select tool here in the top left. This is gonna be the contents of our doc. Um, now we can of course resize it and all that as we wish, but we're gonna set it up so that it's gonna support any sort of aspect ratio and resolution, okay? So it doesn't really matter what the initial uh, layout or the initial aspect ratio of this is, even though this is not what it's gonna look like in our doc, more so it's gonna look something like this. Um, but yeah, that doesn't matter. We can just save it like so. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to go um, to our script again. We then want to go over to the enter tree function, okay? And you may notice that this script looks a bit different than all the others. First of all, it has an at tool attribute at the top to basically denote the script that this is something that is going to run in the editor and these functions are going to run outside of the play state. It also extends from editor plugin. And we have these two functions here, okay? Very different from the on ready um, and the process functions, okay? Enter tree gets called when we want to initialize the plugin. So when we want to basically spawn it in, you could say. And exit tree gets called when we want to basically get rid of the plugin. Okay, and this cleans it up. So inside of 
uh, not inside the function just yet, but outside the functions, we're going to create a variable called doc. And then inside of the enter tree function, we are going to make doc equal to preload. And we then want to go and find our texture generated doc.tscn right here. Select that and then dot instantiate. Okay, so that's going to spawn in that new scene. Uh, but we can't just spawn in a scene and leave it there. We have to basically attach it to the editor. So to do that, we're going to call the add control to doc function here. And first of all, what we want to do is that we want to first of all, give it a position that we want to put this doc in. Okay, so let's just say we want to be on the left hand side. So we can go doc underscore slot underscore left underscore BL, then comma, and then we can go doc. So this is basically then going to attach the doc to the left hand side of the editor here. Now down here in exit tree, this gets called when we want to basically close the plugin. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call the remove control from docs, sending over the doc. And then finally, we want to delete the doc, okay, because this here does not delete it, this just removes it uh, from the editor, basically the opposite of this line here. And then like the opposite of spawning it in, we need to destroy it. So we can then go doc dot free like that. And that is pretty much it for this script right here. Okay. Like I said, it's only really a launcher. Um, so it's not going to manage any of the actual plugin code. So we can save this. Uh, and you may notice that our doc isn't really here. So how do we make it appear? Well, what we need to do is go up to project, then project settings and then over to the plugins tab. And then down here, we have our texture generator plugin. We want to go over to where we have the enable status and basically unenable it, then enable it again. And you'll see then on the left-hand side, we have our dock appearing, okay? We can move it around just like any other. We can click and drag on it to attach it to any other sort of dock group like so. Okay, so we have it here. Uh, we can then move it off. Maybe if you wanna move it up to the inspector here, we can do that as well. We can even attach it uh, back to the scene view here, or we could even click on these little three dots on the top right corner and click make floating to basically make it a floating dock window like so. Okay. Now, uh, right now there's nothing inside of our dock. So how do we actually make stuff appear? Well, what we're going to do is let's just hop back over to the scene here. <laughs> what we're going to do is we are going to select our texture generator dock node here. Okay. And this is basically the contents of our node. So what we're going to do is we are going to right click we're gonna add a child node. And let's just say we wanna add in a button to see what it looks like, okay? So we'll create a button here. Let's make it a bit bigger by clicking and dragging on these orange dots, like so. Let's give it a text. Uh, we'll just say test button for now. We can then drag this out um, and we'll just make it about this big, okay? Not too big, just about that. So we can save that. Um, now to, what you may notice is that if you still have your dock here, like so, you'll notice that the button has not appeared. And the reason why is because anytime you make a change to the scene, the UI scene, you need to basically refresh the dock. And to do that, we can of course go project, project settings, and double click on the enable to disable it and re-enable it again, okay? And here you'll notice that we have the button appearing, we can click on it, but of course it doesn't really do anything just yet. Uh, we can also resize it. Now, something you may notice is that the button is kind of static, okay? It doesn't sort of change size based on our uh, plugin dimensions. Whereas the file system here, you'll notice that all of the elements are sort of changing elements, especially at the top. You see how they are stretching as I increase the stretch of the window here. Well, how can we do that with this button? Well, to do that, we're going to go back to our doc scene here. We're going to select our button. And if you select the texture generated doc, you can see this is the contents. Okay. And this basically follows this blue line right here. So what we can do is we can stretch this all the way out to the exact width of this blue box. And then with these anchoring tools at the top left corner, these little green arrows, we can click and drag on the bottom right one to move it over here. And this basically means that uh, the width is going to match that of these control nodes here. So we can save this. We can go project, project settings, refresh it. And there we go, our test button now resizes with our screen, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that is our test button set up and ready to go, even though we're probably not gonna be using this one. In the next lesson, we are gonna be looking at how we can actually start setting up our UI and connecting it to a script. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then in the next lesson.